My name is Tayo Vyosu, and I'm the founder and CEO of Paga. A few mo months ago, I was talking to a friend of mine, and I was telling him that for Paga to be as successful as I dream, we probably have to invest about $100 million. And he said to me, did you think about that before you started this company? I was actually quite struck by his question because I realized at that moment, I actually never really thought through the amount of money needed to make Paga successful. Imagine the amount of effort it will take and the challenge ahead of me. The question I asked as I thought about that, I realized there's actually a very fine line between bravery and stupidity. Was I brave or was I stupid? I was recounting this story last weekend to a friend, and soon after she tweeted, I sensed that Paga was a bravely stupid idea. <laughs> I think she's right, actually. Um, and I think anyone who has started a business works that fine line between bravery and stupidity. I'm here today because I am committed to seeing Nigeria unearth its potential again and become giant of Africa yet again. And I fully believe that entrepreneurship is how we will do this. When I was working at Cisco Systems uh, in the acquisitions and venture team, our team would see over a thousand companies every year. These are small, medium-sized businesses, startups. They hired 20 to 100 people and were innovating in areas that Cisco was operating. And I'm sure the companies like Google, Sys, uh, Yahoo, Microsoft, etc., saw similar numbers. What it made me realize is that even in developed economies, the engine of growth, indeed, where most of the innovation occurred, was actually in startups and small, medium businesses. And I don't think Nigeria is going to be any different to this. That said, I do not think business is for everyone starting a business. And I also do not think, as many people in Nigeria do, having a side hustle, I do not think of that as entrepreneurship. And my definition of entrepreneurship comes from Eric Grosbeck, the founder of what is now AT&T Cable in the US and a professor at Stanford Business School. Eric describes entrepreneurship as the pursuit of opportunity without regard for the resources currently controlled. The pursuit of opportunity without regard for the resources currently controlled. I love this definition because it really shows the difference between those who have ideas, which we all have ideas, and those who actually take the ideas and try to implement them. Anyone who has done this knows it's incredibly difficult. Things that I will fundamentally advise anyone thinking about entrepreneurship. The first is do something you are passionate about. Without your passion on, on the opportunity you're pursuing, it will be tough to make it through the dark moments. And trust me, you're going to have dark moments. Times when you wonder, is it worth it? Is all this pain, all this frustration I'm going through worth it? And one thing is it's going to be a roller coaster ride, but if it doesn't break you, it's going to make you stronger. So you need to be passionate about it to make it through those moments. Two is you need to be ready for ambiguity and be prepared to fail. I love the chef that came on earlier and talked about how if he got that rack of lamb wrong, that leg of lamb wrong, it's not, you know, it's not failure. And I love that because you have to be able to get up and going from failure. But let's not confuse ambiguity and risk. A lot of people confuse this. Ambiguity is not knowing what is going to happen next. You have to be comfortable with that. Risk, on the other hand, are a variety of things that can happen, negative events to your business. You have to understand the risks to your business. You have to identify them. And forgive my French, you have to mitigate the shit out of them. Right? But you have to be comfortable with ambiguity. And doing that is also being comfortable with the idea that you can fail. 
And the third and probably the most important advice I can give anyone is get started. The best advice I received when I started Paga was from a friend of mine who was already a successful entrepreneur. She said to me, Tayo, don't spend all your time refining your business plan. Think about what you need to do to move forward to the next level and do it. And that was the advice I took to heart. And in truth, it took another year and a half after I started Paga before I actually sat down to finish a business plan. And that was the best thing because at that point, I actually fully understood my business and I understood the various intricacies around it. So those are the three main advices I would give someone who is um, starting a business. It is not easy. There are many challenges. Financing is always a challenge that people talk about. How do you raise money for a business? If you look at Paga's cap table today, there are 30 individuals on our cap table. Angels who have committed and have helped us get to where we are today. If I were in the U.S. running the same business, I probably would have raised that amount of money from about four to five people. But this is Nigeria. This is you know, where we have lack of angel financing, venture financing, and you have to do what it takes to move your idea forward. You pass the hat around. You collect 10,000 naira here, 1 million there, etc., from people. And you, and you raise and do what you have to do. You start people, invest in people, so start with those who know you. Go to your friends, your family, and of course, fools. As you make progress, it will be easier to, make, to, make, to, to raise money and get money into your company. The second thing that people talk about as a challenge, and I think it is a challenge, is finding the right team. This is absolutely critical. It could actually make or break your business. And my advice there is as follows. Look for people who are smarter than you, people who believe in your vision, and people who you would love to have a beer with and spend time with because you will spend a lot of time together. When we look around the world and we look at countries like India, Israel, South Korea, it is clear the journey that they have taken, that it's been entrepreneurs and not government that has gotten them to where they are today. South Korea, as an example, in the 1960s was one of the poorest countries in the world. And they ended 2012 as the 12th largest economy in the world. This is the opportunity, I think, that entrepreneurs can, can bring to a country. In South Korea in particular, the entrepreneurs there focus not just on the domestic market, but on the export market as well. In 2007, when I was considering moving back to Nigeria from the United States, I was talking to a friend of mine who had been living in South Africa. And he said, and he's been doing a lot of work in Nigeria, and he said to me, Tayo, Nigeria feels like where India and China were 15 years ago. You had seen steady growth, and you've seen the government create policies that made it easy. What we need for this to happen is we need men and women who would be brave, who would dream big, ignore all the odds against them, because there are many odds against them, and pursue opportunities they're passionate about in various sectors of our economy. What we need are men and women who would walk that line between bravery and stupidity. And I hope you'll join me on that adventure. Thank you.